This video is for you if you are experiencing some of the following problems. Number one, you wake up and already feel tired, despite the fact that you just woke up and slept over eight hours. Number two, you struggle to lose weight. You eat healthy, exercise, and even count calories, but still, things don't seem to be working for you. Number three, you feel exhausted and sleepy. You don't have the energy for anything during the day, and when it's evening, you can't fall asleep. Number four, you get sick very often. Recently, I read a book called Circadian Code by Dr. Sachin Panda and found answers to the above problems. So let's get started. We'll start with nutrition, but first, let me explain what circadian clock is because it controls everything that is happening in your brain and body. Every single thing in your life happens in rhythm. For example, you have to be at work at a certain time and leave at a certain time. Similarly to your working hours, your brain and every single organ in your body have working and resting hours that are controlled by their individual clocks, also known as circadian clocks. Not just humans, every single animal and plant on Earth has it. Unlike humans, plants and animals are very respectful to their circadian clocks. For example, if your boss expects you to be at work at 8 a.m. sharp every day, you can't just show up at random times each day. Just like coming to work inconsistently will ruin your career, being inconsistent with eating and sleeping will ruin your health. Here's an experiment about the inconsistency that personally blew my mind. The author took two identical twin mice and gave them the same unhealthy diet in the same amount each day. The only difference was that one mouse was allowed to eat whenever it wanted, while the other had to eat within an eight hour window. The experiment lasted for 18 weeks and the results were quite shocking. The mouse which had free access to food gained 28% more weight and developed all kinds of diseases such as diabetes, obesity, fatty liver, and heart diseases. But the mouse that ate the same unhealthy food in a controlled time window didn't develop any of those diseases. Quite the opposite. It had more energy, became more athletic, had better blood sugar and cholesterol levels. Here is another surprising finding. When the sick and overweight mouse was put in the same limited feeding cycle as its sibling, the diseases that were developed started to disappear without any medication. Not only that, it also started to lose weight and a huge portion of the weight loss was actually fat loss, which was another interesting finding because many times when weight loss happens along with the fat, a portion of muscle mass is also lost. However, in this case, it was mainly fat that was lost. Again, I would like to remind you that they both ate the same junk food in the exact same amounts, only the eating window was different. Here is a question that you might ask. What would happen if we did the same experiment, but with healthy food instead of junk food? Well, the author did that as well, and the results were the same. The mouse that ate in an unlimited window started to gain weight despite the fact that the food was healthy. This was quite mind-blowing for me personally because I thought that weight gain and all those diseases wouldn't happen once food is healthy. But experiments prove the opposite. Regardless of how healthy your diet is, eating on an unlimited window causes weight gain and creates diseases. This is revolutionary because it supports the concept that when you eat is as important or even more important than what you eat. If you are wondering why timing matters so much, then here's the reasoning behind. On a typical day, you probably start with breakfast. As soon as you finish your breakfast, your body uses some of that food as energy and stores some of it as fat. The same process of turning food into energy and fat continues during the day when you eat your lunch and dinner. However, after your last bite at the dinner, things start to change. Your body goes low on carb and stops storing fat. Your circadian clock dramatically increases the fat burning process and also activates the repair and rejuvenation mode. Cells and DNA that were damaged during the day get repaired. The next day, the entire process repeats. But now, let us imagine you delay your last meal and eat quite late at night. As you can see from the graph, the fat storing process gets activated again when it shouldn't be and the fat burning and repair process gets deactivated when it should actually be active. For most people today, the eating period is 15 hours or more. Not just that, the eating period during the weekends is different from the weekdays. 
This creates a jet lag effect for your digestive organs. You probably know how jet lag ruins your sleep, right? For example, if you travel from Brazil at 8 a.m. to Japan and the flight lasts, let's say, 12 hours, then by the time you land in Japan, it will still be 8 a.m. because Japan is 12 hours ahead of Brazil. So as you leave the plane, your brain is expecting to find a dark environment to go to sleep, but instead finds a very bright sky. A similar thing happens to your digestive organs when you eat at random times. During weekdays, your body feels like you're in Brazil, and during the weekend, it feels like you've traveled to Japan for a vacation. By respecting your circadian rhythm, you can avoid eating disorders and diseases. The author supports a fasting cycle that can last from 12 to 16 hours, with an eating window of 8 to 12 hours. This type of eating is also known as intermittent fasting. You've probably heard of it. I personally have been doing intermittent fasting for more than five years. I started it as a way to lose weight and it worked quite well for my weight loss. Before intermittent fasting, I remember I was eating quite healthy, counting my calories and I was exercising regularly every week. But for some reason, weight loss was very, very slow. And after some time, I completely stopped losing weight and stayed at the same weight for a long time. That is when I tried intermittent fasting and things changed drastically. Even after losing weight, I didn't stop because I quite liked how I felt. I currently have 18 hours of fasting and six hours of eating window. But when I started, I could only fast for 12 hours max and then increased it slowly to 18 hours. These days, I only eat from 2 p.m. until 8 p.m. Now, I can already see comments saying that breakfast is the most important meal of the day and you shouldn't skip it or you shouldn't fast that long. First of all, this is what best fits my schedule. Second, when we used to live in caves, we probably didn't eat breakfasts. In fact, early humans probably stayed hungry for several days because food wasn't readily available. They hunted and ate, and until their next hunt, they stayed hungry. So I think we are biologically more prone to fasting rather than eating breakfast, snacks, and multiple other meals for 15 hours. The author says that a cycle of a 15 hour eating window is terrible for your health, as terrible as a junk food diet. Let me repeat, a 15 hour eating window is worse than a junk food diet. Now, when talking about nutrition and the eating cycle, we can't ignore the sleeping cycle because they are connected. After all, when your eyes stay open, your mouth also stays open. If you have stayed awake until late at night and found yourself in front of the fridge, then you know what I mean, right? This brings me to the second lesson, which is about the sleep cycles. Our sleep cycle is so hardwired into our brain that even if I take you to another planet, lock you in a room, turn all the lights off, and remove the lock from the room, you will still go to sleep according to your sleep cycle. We are so accustomed to the 24-hour day cycle that if you somehow traveled to another planet that has a different amount of hours than 24, it would be very difficult to survive. Now, let us look at how sleep happens normally. Your eyes have a blue light sensing sensor called melanopsin. These sensors are hardwired into your brain, into your master circadian clock. Melanopsin has very interesting characteristics. Bright light, such as daylight, activates it and sends signals to your brain saying that it's time to be alert and active. On the other hand, orange light, such as candlelight or moonlight, doesn't activate melanopsins, so they send the opposite signal to the brain saying that it is time to sleep. As a result, your brain starts increasing melatonin, drops your body temperature, and prepares you for bed. You might ask, why is this information about melanopsin so important? Here's why. We spend 90% of our time inside, either in a classroom, in an office, or at home. This means you don't get the bright light that you need to activate the melanopsin to reset the circadian clock and make you active for the day. On the other hand, when it is evening, you sit in front of a computer or TV which has very bright blue light and melanopsins get activated. So in the morning, when it should get activated and prepare you to be active for the day, it doesn't because you sit in a closed environment and don't get the necessary light. And in the evening, it gets activated when it shouldn't be activated. 
You keep sending wrong signals to your brain and start living in this confusing world. When it is daytime, your brain thinks that it is nighttime. And when it is nighttime, your brain thinks that it is daytime. No wonder you feel sleepy and have no energy during the day. No wonder you can't fall asleep in the evening. No wonder you feel tired all day long. No wonder you wake up feeling exhausted. So how can you fix this and reset your circadian clock correctly? Here are nine tips. One, take a walk outside in the morning. Five minutes is enough to set your clock correctly. Two, position your desk as close as possible to a window that allows the light to get in. Do the same for your employees if you own a company. They'll feel better at work if they're near daylight. Even architects have been taking this into consideration when designing buildings and houses. You don't have to stand in the daylight all day, but getting at least two hours of daylight exposure is essential for your health. Three, don't use screens or glasses with a blue light filter during the day. Four, avoid all screens after 6 p.m., but if you absolutely must use them, set them not to emit blue light. Most modern smartphones and computers have this function. Five, you've probably noticed cool weather is more comfortable for sleeping than hot temperatures. Make sure your bedroom's temperature is not too hot. Six, to fall asleep, your body temperature needs to drop and a hot shower before bed helps. Seven, make sure you're hydrated throughout the day. If you feel dehydrated during the night, keep a glass of water near you. This way you won't have to walk to the kitchen and end up fully awake. Also, don't drink any coffee after midday. The effects of caffeine can stay with you for up to 10 hours. So the coffee you drink in the afternoon and in the evening will certainly disturb your sleep. Eight, you should stop eating altogether at least two to three hours before sleeping, including alcoholic drinks and snacks. Nine, if you can, exercise in the morning under the sunlight. Lesson number three, exercise. It's not a secret that we should exercise to be healthy, but this book has answered many of the questions I used to have about exercising. What time of the day is the best time to exercise? Should I do heavy lifting in the morning or afternoon? How often is enough? What kind of exercise should I do, etc. The good news is that we don't need to exercise several hours a day to be healthy. According to the author's studies, just 30 minutes a day for five days a week is enough to make a difference. The best times of the day to exercise are in the morning and in the late afternoon, between 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. While mornings are great for aerobic and stretching exercises, Late afternoons are the ideal time for strength training because your body will be at its peak of preparation for heavy work. This way you can avoid injuries and have a better recovery. If you decide to exercise before breakfast, make sure you don't engage in strenuous or physically demanding exercise. It's okay to walk or cycle before breakfast, but not lifting heavy weights, for example. Finally, in case your schedule doesn't allow you to do your exercise at once, then divide it into two or three segments of 10 to 15 minutes per day but avoid exercising in the evening because it will ruin your sleep. This was the last lesson. Here's the summary of what we talked about in this video. Number one, as you saw from the mouse experiment, eating on a limited window will not just help you to lose weight, it will also help you to stay healthy. Before you apply this, please talk to your doctor. This is not medical advice and I'm not a doctor. I'm just a random girl who makes videos on the internet. Number two, we talked about melanopsin and how it sends confusing signals because of the way we are living these days. Make sure to follow those nine tips to reset your circadian clock correctly. Finally, number three, we discussed how much you should exercise and what time of the day is the best, depending on the type of exercise you do. Now, if you've clicked this video and watched so far, then I assume you are a type of person who wants to improve his or her health. The majority of people will not watch such videos. If you'd like to learn more about this topic, then I have two more videos for you. These are the two videos that I personally force my relatives and friends to sit down and watch because they are so important. The one on the left is about sleep based on the book called Why We Sleep. And the one on the right is about meditation based on the book called Power of Now. If you've already seen them, then make sure you subscribe and turn on all notifications so that you don't miss future videos. If you don't turn on all notifications, then YouTube will not notify you every time when a new video is uploaded. Thanks for watching.